Hey everyone, please support what I do to help keep Greyhawk alive by subscribing to the channel. Also, please consider becoming a channel member to get early access to videos, exclusive live chats, quarterly adventure modules, and more. Thanks, and enjoy the show. So I was thinking about running Greyhawk campaigns, and uh, you know, a lot of people really tend to deviate from what we see, what the canon is in Greyhawk, and that got me wondering, when does it stop being Greyhawk? And that's what I want to talk about today on Greyhawk Rognard. Now, bear in mind that every time anyone runs a Greyhawk campaign, they're necessarily, you know, making it their own. That's what it's supposed to be. That's what you're supposed to do is make Greyhawk your own. But um, a lot of times on online, uh, I'll, I'll read people talking about their Greyhawk campaigns, and they really go far afield from, uh, you know, what is considered to be the traditional material. You know, way, way out of, uh, uh, out of left field. You know, they might use the maps, but they might also bring in stuff from, like, the known world, or even, you know, say that their planet, you know, their Flaness is on the same planet as uh, Forgotten Realms, or they'll use, uh, you know, like, um, uh, Norse gods, which, you know, uh, interestingly, there were actually in the original uh, late Geneva campaign that they had Norse gods and they had Cthulhu and stuff like that but uh, in the published material obviously they have their own deities um, and it, it got me thinking you know at what point does your Greyhawk campaign stop being Greyhawk um, you know how much non-canon stuff is um, you know, where, where's the tipping point? And I don't pretend to have an answer to this. I really would love to have this be a conversation in the comments. Uh, and, I, and if, uh, you know, there's some really engaging ideas, I'll, I'll do a follow-up to this. Um, you know, now, there's, there's a couple of different ways to approach the idea of what's, you know, of, of additional or new stuff in Greyhawk. Um, obviously, the, um, the, the actions of the player characters are going to have an impact. Uh, you could very easily run a game in which your characters somehow stop Ayus from conquering the northern parts of the Flaness. Um, you know, so you're right there. You're going to have a very deviant timeline than what we see in, say, From the Ashes and The Adventure Begins. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of those sorts of examples. You know, you could have one where the um, the PCs stop the giants from from taking over Joff. Or, um, or alternatively, you could have you could have in your game the PCs fail to stop Eclavdra, and there's all of a sudden a elemental yeah, elder elemental god worshiping nation in uh, the western Sheldamar Valley. Uh, you know what, what? What's you know? There, there's a lot of ways that your PCs' actions can cause your Greyhawk to go off in a direction that the rest of us didn't go. Um, you know, and that's to be expected. That's part of the game because that's you know you want the players to ha be able to um, you know undertake actions that are meaningful. And in those situations, um, you know. Uh, is that still Greyhawk? I would argue yes. You know, if you're starting off with the gold box and it just happens to be that your players take you in, you know, off in a, on a tangent from what the other later materials say, then, you know, that's, that's, that's what you expect. Um, of course, you might disagree, and I'd love to hear, uh, you know, at, at, I'd love to hear from you down in the, in, in the comments. Um, but the, the, the real question is, you know, when, you, when the DM starts making structural changes to the setting, um, when, at what point does it stop being Greyhawk? Or does it just start be, I guess the, the better way to put it would be, when does it, uh, you know, become a complete homebrew that just happens to have some Greyhawk stuff in it? Um, you know, because you could do a Greyhawk, uh, you could do a homebrew campaign that has IUs in it, for example. Uh, or you could do a homebrew, homebrew campaign that starts in Hamlet, but your world is completely different. And, you know, that's, that's a homebrew with some Greyhawk stuff in it. Um, or you could use the maps, uh, you know, you could use those Darlene maps for your game and have completely different descriptions of what the kingdoms are. You know, you, you could have the Great Kingdom be a good realm. You could change uh, Kaoland and the surrounding areas into a big evil empire. Um, you know, you could um, uh, 
you, you could plant a, uh, a, techno, a technological, magical, steampunk um, uh, country in the middle of Furiondi. You know, you're, you know, y you as the DM can make those structural changes to, to the setting. And at what point does it stop? I mean, do, does having one steampunk country in the middle of the finesse mean it's not Greyhawk anymore? Or does changing the nature of the Great Kingdom mean it's not Greyhawk anymore? Or does, you know, is, is, is it enough that you have the maps? You know, is, is it the maps that make it Greyhawk? You know, if you're using those beautiful Darlene maps, I have a Greyhawk campaign, even though nothing about it matches anybody else's Greyhawk campaign. Um, and, you know, the, the same thing with the deities. You know, I, I read a lot of uh, people who say, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm bringing in all kinds of uh, new deities. Uh, I've, you know, I, I, I instead of the Iridian and, and common deities and Sul and so forth, you know, I brought in uh, the, the Finnish and the Norse and the Greek gods and, you know, that kind of thing. At, does that change it? I mean, does that move it from Greyhawk status to homebrew with some Greyhawk status? Um, I don't know. I don't pretend to have a, a, an answer to these questions. And I don't think that there is a hard line that you can apply in every case. Um... But I, I would love to explore this with you guys in the comments. Um, you know, where do you draw the line? What What's the weirdest sort of Greyhawk campaign you've seen? I mean, I, I've also seen uh, people, uh, I've, I've even thought about it myself, doing what's called Gamma Hawk, which was basically a Gamma World campaign set in a very far future world of Greyhawk. Um, is that a Greyhawk campaign, or is it its own thing? It, it's, um, I think it's an interesting question, and I would love to hear what you have to say on the subject. So uh, please, uh, feel free, jump in uh, below, and like I say, if uh, you know, I'll, I'll try to engage uh, as much as I can in the comments, and if uh, people have some very, uh, particularly very interesting uh, takes on it, I'll be happy to do a follow-up to this. So anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. I would love to hear your thoughts on the subject, and hope you're having a wonderful day, and I will talk to you later later. Stay safe from Pinkerton. Thanks for watching today's video. Please remember to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Below you'll find links to my Patreon which helps make these videos possible. You'll also find the web store where you can buy my books and my blog where you'll find all sorts of free downloads and other articles. Thanks and have a great day.